Hi there. Um, so look, we're cracking on with the uh, 5.4 bespoke build CB1100RS. Uh, since we last filmed, I mean, you've got a big chunk of us stripping the bike down, removing the exhaust, the footrests, etc. I have actually removed the fuel pump now, uh, just to save time down the line, because what I'm doing now, in essence, is prepping the bike to get the bodywork on, because I always, always do what is called a dry build. Uh, which is I'm going to fit all the bodywork, the tailpiece, the nose cone. I haven't yet got the headlamp mount, so I haven't stripped the front at all. So uh, until those arrive, I'm just concentrating on the back and the tailpiece and the single seat, that beautiful aluminium seat cowl. Um, so what I have done, uh, coming closer, Harry, uh, the tailpiece has two bobbins that locate in here to lock it into place uh, rather than using these things. Um, and one of the very first ones I built, uh, it doesn't actually need this plate, um, but one of the customers complained that the bobbins were scratching the frame here. So I retrospectively uh, fitted uh, these nylon slipper plates, which are just a strip of nylon. I drill the holes, uh, drill the outer mounting holes, uh, and then countersink it and uh, stick a bit of rubber on it so it's not metal against that so it doesn't vibrate and zing mainly at tick over when you sat on it it wouldn't but it might zing a bit because it's you know quite a voluminous uh, aluminium tailpiece um, so look i've made that slipper plate i've put the uh, rubber pad on it uh, and i've fitted it with some little four mil countersunk uh, bolts uh, with nylock nuts on so you don't have to murder it up and crack this that shouldn't I like to say it won't come loose, uh, but it shouldn't come loose. Um, so that's that. Um, obviously, I've got to bolt all the tailpiece together. There's a mounting plate. Uh, there's the bobbins. There's the seat lock that goes in here. Um, but also, one of the main things I have to do to this frame is uh, these here are the indicator mounts. And when the single seat tailpiece is on, um, they look awful. So what I actually do is, because the grab rail's not on, I use the grab rail mounting holes and mount the standard indicators here, and I shorten them a bit. I've got one here somewhere. Hang on, I can show you. Um, so this is the mounting bracket for the indicator. Uh, that sits in this hole here, and then that rubber's got two holes in, and it, and it pushes on. Uh, it's actually quite long, so what I do is I reduce it down to there. Uh, I cut most of it off with a Stanley knife, and then I linish it. I'll show you doing that. Um, and uh, also then this bracket has to be shortened, the mounting bracket, because obviously the indicator is shorter because that's got to sit there and then that's too long. So I shorten those and shorten those, but we'll deal with that down the line. Uh, but because this indicator is going there, this lug has to come off. Um, the first one I did at Corby, all the Honda mechanics that saw me there, it was, it was a brand new bike, racked up, the first one I was doing, and the first thing they saw me do was hit it with an angle grinder and sparks going everywhere. And one of them came over and said, my God, what are you doing to that bike? I said, I'm modifying it. Um, and he went, doesn't that make you nervous? Uh, it doesn't really make me nervous, but you do have to be careful. It's the old adage of measure twice, cut once. So now I've said that, it'll probably go wrong. Uh, but I've done you know, 40 odd of these now, um, all hand built. So I am used to doing it. Um, so uh, I was a bit nervous on the prototype, but not on the production ones. So the first thing to do is put masking tape on here so I can mark it with a Sharpie. So you just wrap a bit of this round uh, where you're gonna mark it. It doesn't, I have degreased this so it does stick properly. Um, and I'll put a split in that there because it's got to go around a curve and it all bubbles up if you don't. So that goes around there. You don't have to be fancy with this, it's literally just a cut line. Um, get it nice and tight on there. I'll do the other side while I'm at it. So I'm going to cut on this line here uh, and radius it around there. Um, I'll just do the radius by eye to be honest with you. But this is just to get my cut line right. Now you can see that curve there, I need to split it here. So if I shorten that a little bit, just to try and get it not to bubble a bit. There we go. Push that in so, you've got, so you can see what you're cutting. Um, doesn't matter if there's wrinkles in it. I'm, you know, I'm cutting this off with an angle grinder. Uh, so that's that. Um, now I, I have made... Um, Need my glasses for this. 
Uh, where's my Sharpie? I had a Sharpie. Bless in my pocket. How often have you looked for something? Uh, like I've looked for my glasses. I spent 20 minutes looking. They were on my head. So here's my template. I've got a few little marks on. Obviously, they're only uh, there for me to do. So I push it right to the back. So this is roughly the shape of the indicator. And I know that little black line is on the back of the lug. Uh, also, what I'm looking at is this is the other hole I'm going to drill. That's, I, I'll put a centre punch in there to mark the frame. Uh, I do measure it once I've centre punched it to check it's OK. Um, so that goes roughly there. Push it right to the back. I don't bolt it on. Uh, and then you just draw around that. And I will come. This is the waist side here. Um, so I will come a few mil proud of that. Uh, just to be safe. I can always linish it down once I've cut it. And then this one here, uh, you, I do this by eye. I don't need the tape on for it, but that's going to kind of go up like that. So that'll be radiused. And I'll do all that with a little flat disc. Uh, well, a big one to begin with and then a little one. So there's my cut line. So I will just cut straight on this. I'm not going to get too fancy when I cut it and try and do that. And I'll put the curve in after. Right, I've got my goggles on. They're already starting to steam up, so I need to get uh, a move on. So I'm just making sure I can get this in the right place. So yeah, there we go. Right. That's number one done. Well, cut off, I've still got to linish it and tidy it all up. I use my finger to steady this on here. Obviously that side, you're pressing on the bit you're cutting off, so you can only lean on it to start with. Uh, so now I've cut that off. I'm just going to do a quick check. Look, these go in here. I can't get both of the prongs in, but I can get that one through there and put it in there, which will give me roughly the four and a half movement on it. And you can see from there, I've got a little bit to play with. You see there, I've got a little bit. So if I go to the outside of that line, uh, that'll be fine. I'll just check the other side. It just makes you cautious of how much you can actually uh, remove. So uh, that one goes in there. So look, that's there, that's the same. So that one I cut right on the line. I got a bit more adventurous with that one. That's where it should be. So now I've got to take these corners off and take that corner off and linish it so it's a really nice shape around that indicator. That's why I've got this one here so I can use it as a template. I use this as a template. Um, obviously I've got to drill the other hole yet, but you can see where it's going and that will be mounted there like that. It'll be that much shorter. So it's really tucked in tight, uh, but it still meets all the requirements for, you know, you have to be one side, you still have to see it on the other side and all that. So, um, so look, that's, that's fine. Right, so next I've got a flap disc on the angle grinder. I've taken the one mil thick cutting disc off. Uh, and basically what I'm gonna do is just round off these corners, the bottom one there, this one here and get it nice and parallel uh, with the bike. Uh, that's it in theory. Uh, you do have to go quite a long way up here to taper that radius in. So right now I'm going to take the tape off because it's just, you know, it's slightly baggy and getting in my way. Um, and I've got a little uh, flap disc that I just finish it with. Um, we'll do that in a sec. Now this other side is more awkward because of the way the angle grinder is. The sparks tend to hit me in the face. Um, I just 
keep out of the way of it. I mean, obviously I've got to check it with the indicators on um, and when I've chopped them short, I will bolt them on. I've got to paint this edge, obviously, um, but these are razor sharp, so you can't leave it on the bike like that razor sharp. If someone ran their hand over it, they could slice their finger open. Uh, so I just use this little one and just uh, sort of slightly radius the edges. I mean, this is all going to be touched in, so... I'm just going to take a smidgen more off that one now. I'm talking microns here, you're not hitting it, taking a large amount off. Just radiusing that edge. Yeah, that needs radiusing as well. Well, I think that is pretty much there. So I've just cut the uh, lugs off uh, for the indicators for the 5.4, uh, how we want them. So that's done and I've sort of cleaned it all up. Uh, next is drill the holes uh, because those indicators, as I've shown you, have two metal bars going through. So we need to drill another hole in here to get that indicator on there. Um, however, I've already got the angle grinder uh, and the flap disc out. So uh, what I now do is um, cut this mug guard off because look, that sits in there. There's the mounting holes there that are here. So that sits like that. We're going to cut this off here. Uh, it looks lovely when it's done. I'll, I'll show you. Um, so look, I'll show you how I cut these off. I'm very lucky uh, in a way because I'm doing more than one of these. Um, I've got a jig for marking this up. So they're all absolutely identical because doing these for Honda, every bike has to be the same. There can't be a variation in them. Uh, that's why uh, if you want something a bit different, it has to be a bespoke build and you can't get the new ones anyway. So I'm carrying on building these. Uh, if anyone wants one, give me a shout. But um, so now is modify this mug guard. And the reason I haven't made a separate one is because this is lovely. It's really sturdy steel. It's got all the wiring clips and stuff in it. So, uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So cut this one off. It, you already can't put the bike back to standard with the grab rail on because our indicators are now where the grab rail would mount. Um, so yes, I'll show you how to do it. Right, so now uh, we've got the task of cutting all this bit of this off. Um, so uh, what do I do? Right, uh, obviously you've got to know where you're going to cut. Uh, I'm very lucky because I've got this jig these bolts go in the holes here and it slots on, but obviously you've got to mark it. Um, so just do it with masking tape. It does lift a bit because it gets hot and gets burnt. But um, just put a bit of that across there. Fold it over. So you put a few of these on to obviously to cover the whole area you need to mark. Right, there's my jig. What did I do with that Sharpie? Here we go again, my usual trick of putting stuff down and not being able to find it. Uh, what's that? Is this one going to work? I think this is an old one. So, so just hold that steady. Just press it down, it's a bit springy. I'm doing that line quite thick on purpose because I'm going to cut. Obviously, this is the waste side. This is what's going in the bin. And um, So you want to be proud of where you want to be. You can always linish it down easily. You don't want to have to be building it back up. Right, there it is marked. I've only just gone in there, but that's all right. Um, so that's that. Right, next, I've got to just make it safe. Now, 
use whatever you can to get that safe. I'm just trying to think which way I cut this. Uh, I normally cut it that way round, and I rest this on here just to take a bit of the weight of it, and I get it right on the edge so I've got access um, with my hands. That's, that seems a bit high. There we go. I'll leave this thing in, this rubber, because it's good for this to grip to. It's there for grip. I'm not worried about marking it there, because that bit's going in the bin. Right, that's not going anywhere. So right now, um, I'm ready to cut. Uh, so I've got to go this side of it. Uh, and also, normally I just, it's very easy when you, you know, by the time you've got your goggles on and you're about to get your gloves on and everything else, uh, it's very easy to just hit it and cut the wrong side. So always mark the waist side. You wouldn't believe how many times I've actually cut to the wrong side of the line over the years. Um, right, so obviously I've got to cut this side of the line. I'll give it a few mil in case I slip. Um, so hopefully I don't eat into the bit I want. You can always build it up with weld and repaint it. So nothing's a disaster. You can fix most things. But uh, uh, So I'll try and get it right. Now obviously I've got to cut in a curve. And obviously that disc is straight. They don't like cutting in a curve. But if you go sort of gently and gradually work your way through, uh, you can get a vague curve. It's not going to be perfect, but we'll clean it up with a flap disc after. Um, Oh, I'm not plugged in. That would help. Uh, I unplugged it because I changed the blade and I, I don't like changing them when I'm plugged in. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to move it to the other side to do that last cut. Obviously, the bench is in the way. Right, I've moved it across this side because obviously the angle grinder was hitting the bench there. Uh, so I've had to move it. I always have to do that. It'd be nice if I had a long, thin one of these benches where it was just a little bit wider than the mug gob, but I haven't, so you have to make do. Uh, so I've just got to cut this off. Uh, this won't fall off because there's the... If you remember, when we strip the rear light out, uh, the wiring goes in a channel. That will still be connected. So I have to flip it over and cut that on the inside. Um, so I'm just going to complete this cut. You can see I'm a, just proud of that line. Um, and I'll linish this down. I'll leave a hair of that line in by the time it's finished. So, yeah, there we go. It's just that um, cable channel uh, that's holding that on. So, that's that done. We can get rid of that. And now, um, so, this is the end I'm keeping. Uh, you can see that channel there. So, I've got to cut that. Right, there we go. Uh, that is the bit we wanted off. And as you can see, I already have a few down here.
Right, so now uh, I've got that line there. Um, I'm just going to unplug this, change the disc to a flap disc to cut it down. So now I'll move that out of the way. So now I'll just hang this over the edge and hold it. And so I'm going to grind this down. So I've just got a nice thin black edge on that line. Yeah, if I hold that up, uh, you'll be able to see I've just left the tiniest bit of my line on there. Uh, and it's great to leave a tiny bit because if you remove it completely, uh, you're then at sixes and sevens as to where it should exactly be. Now, that won't be perfect, but I'll redress this, get it lovely and smooth. And again, like the indicator lugs, I'll radius the edge. So this will get painted and then I'll stick rubber trim on it uh, just to tidy it up. I glue a bit of rubber trim on. So, I mean, obviously this needs tidying up now, uh, and I do that with the uh, little whizzy wheel. So look, I'm happy with that line. Um, also, when you get to this stage, uh, I get the tape off because your eye is very good and you can feel the edge. And if there's a slight bow in it somewhere, I find it easier to um, sort it out without the tape on. And it's, that's how it's gonna be when it's on the bike. So if, it's, if it looks good, uh, with the tape off and when it's all uh, all the edges are radiused uh, well that's that's happy days so just pick all this off it'll leave glue behind because it's got very hot when you're cutting it right so uh, I'm just now going to run that you can see there's there's some really sharp bits on this um, so I'll just take them off uh, with this little one it's easier Also, when you radius the edges, it gives you a really good idea if there's a tiny wobble in it. I find it sort of highlights the edge. Right, that's, so when I run my finger on that now, I can feel that's quite nice and smooth. Obviously, I've got to do the outside now. And it doesn't matter if it's got a slight silver edge on it. I mean, one, I'm going to paint it uh, by hand anyway. Um, but also, it'll have some rubber trim on it. So, um, just to keep it really neat and tidy. You're just looking really for a uniform silver edge on it here. So when you look at that in the light, can you see that? You see that silver edge on it, look. And you can see if there's a wobble in it, that'll amplify it. And there's the inside. Um, so I'm happy with that. Now I've just got to deal with this. There's a sharp tang on that and I don't want someone if they run their hand under the back of the bike to cut their finger. Um, so I'm just going to deal with this. Just going to round it off really. Obviously I'll be painting all these. Right, 
that's that. I just need one final thing. Um, obviously, where I've cut this tube off, I've just radiused the edges on the outside so it won't cut your fingers. I mean, no wires going back up in this, so it doesn't really matter. But there is a little bit of a burr on that on the inside of that channel. So I'm just going to take that off with that. So, uh, look, you see that there? That's what's come off there. Look, just that. Just get all the sharp bits off, basically. You know, it's common sense. So look, I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. I've just got to clean it, degrease it, paint it, stick a bit of trim on. Um, I think that's done and you get an idea of what it's going to look like on the bike. Uh, and this just slots in here. Let me get this off. Um, so that just slots in there. So it just, and then there's the bolts that mount it. There you go. So that's where we're going. Look at that on the line of that frame. It's spot on. Uh, and that's because we've got a jig. That looks lovely. It's, uh, and that'll have a bit of rubber trim on it. So happy days. So before I fit that, I've now got to drill the lugs. Right, having cut the mug guard and linished it and everything, uh, the next job to do, I don't have to do it right now actually because the tailpiece will go on without doing this, but it's more to do with I'm going to paint the back of the mug guard and I want to paint these as well at the same time and also I paint the holes that I've drilled just to stop that rusting. Um, so I'll just show you how I do this. I've got my little template with a hole there. Um, I put that on there. Um, a lot of it's by eye. I, I kind of trust my eyes really. Uh, Maybe I shouldn't, but there we go. So uh, it's got a hole in that plate, the one I use for cutting off the, um, uh, for cutting off the lugs. Uh, I think that's roughly level. Right, I put a center punch in. Uh, now I'm just gonna check it with my vernier that it is in the right place, because with that plate, there is a bit of room for error. Uh, that's, oh, it's just a, it's about, quarter of a millimetre too far this way, so I'll go at an angle. That'll have moved it just a tiny bit. Right, I'll check it again. It's, it's level. Uh, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Uh, you always have to file the holes a little bit anyway when you're done. Uh, where's my drill here? Right, that's the pilot hole through. That's a three. That's my four mil. Now I can get my step drill and open it up to eight. Just looking at the sizing. So it's the one, two, the second one from the top. Size up and that puts a countersink on it and cleans it up. That's really nice. Um, now I will have to. F oh no, I've got one more hole to do on this. I have to run an eight and a half through it. Hopefully, this one won't be tricky to get through. Might be a bit blunt. must have bought a new one at some point. Right, that's the two holes drilled. Uh, let's see, here's my bracket. Uh, as I said earlier, it needs reworking this and this, 
but this is just to see does it fit and go through uh, there we go that goes on uh, I've done the other side already um, so there we go that's where they'll go um, obviously got to paint the ends and paint the end of the mug guard and fit the trim uh, but this bike's nearly ready to start putting the rear light and rear light mount and rear number plate mount on but I'd just like to get this first so you just got to take it all off again to do this work so uh, there we go happy days right that's a convenient place to stop today uh, if you've got any comments uh, get them in and I will endeavour to answer them uh, and also if you could like and subscribe because it does make a difference and it all really helps uh, and join me in the next episode for the bespoke build of the CB1100 RS where the skullduggery will continue. <laughs>